know, these threats tend to disproportionately affect the most vulnerable and marginalised in our societies. Whilst COVID-19 set us back, it also provides us an opportunity to reset and to recommit to human rights, and also to strengthen the inclusion of those left behind and to demonstrate solidarity. It is here that the collective work of the forum, as well as that of its individual members, is most needed and most critical. So in closing, I wish to commend the Equality and Human Rights Commission for its stewardship of the CFNHRI, as well as for ably adapting in trying times and guiding the forum longer than anyone expected. I also wish to congratulate the Rwanda National Human Rights Commission, who as incoming chair, I am sure will lead the forum from strength to strength in this post-COVID world. I look forward to building a fruitful relationship with the Commission and to work working closely with both the Forum and each of the institutions. I hope to speak with you and as many as possible, really, throughout the course of the next two days and wish you all an engaging and productive meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the things that makes me so happy about Rwanda being the incoming chair of the Commonwealth is it is again a source of cooperation between UK institutions and Rwandan ones. Uh, we already have excellent examples of that in areas from education to climate to business. And so it's really great to see our human rights commissions working so closely together too. And I think next week's meetings are gonna take this even further. And as uh, Baroness Faulkner said, it's great that we're meeting here in person uh, in beautiful Kigali after two long and difficult years. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen the excitement and the energy there is around town for, for the Commonwealth and for Chogham. Um, and I think part of that is because we haven't met in person for so long and we've been waiting for this for so long. But I also think it's partly because Rwanda has a special place in the Commonwealth. Rwanda is the newest member of the Commonwealth and it doesn't have a colonial history with the UK. So it's a country that saw the value of this big family of nations and really understood what the Commonwealth could bring to Rwanda and what Rwanda could bring to the Commonwealth. So I know that this is going to be the first of many fantastic events over the next 10 days. But I'm particularly delighted that this is the first event that I attend in the run-up to Chogham. Because the Commonwealth promotes peace and security and trade, yes, but at its heart, the most important thing is that this is an organization of shared values. This is a family that believes in human rights, in justice, and in equality. And national human rights organizations have a vital role to play in that. You sensitize our populations to these important issues. You support those who are most marginalized, who are most vulnerable. And vitally, you hold governments to account. I applaud you for that work. And given the impact of COVID-19, it's right that we're talking particularly about how the pandemic has impacted on our promotion of human rights. In some ways, COVID did generate a lot of solidarity we all face the same unseen enemy. Uh, almost all of us saw disruption to our lives in some way or another or fell sick ourselves, uh, including me last week, actually. So I almost didn't make this, but uh, in case you're worried, I did test negative three times in the last week. But the truth is that the impact of COVID didn't hit everybody equally. It hit the poor harder than the rich, for example. Those with less of a financial cushion suffered more. But it also hit particularly hard on communities who were already struggling, communities who were already uh, most disadvantaged, groups like LGBT communities and disabled people. Indeed, the uh, Equalities and Human Rights Commission did a good report on the impact of COVID-19 on disability rights, which I commend to you. So it's right that we ask ourselves what could have been done differently and what can we do better when we face the next crisis in order to protect those who need it most. More broadly, I want to pay tribute to the work of human rights defenders across the Commonwealth. A vibrant civil society plays a vital role in defending human rights, protecting good governance and democracy. 
And given the rollback in civil rights in parts of the world, including, unfortunately, parts of the Commonwealth, human rights defenders and civil society are integral to upholding the core values that make this family of nations what it is, because we are nothing without our values. Those values mean speaking up for democracy, for a free, responsible press, and for open, peaceful political debate. It also means standing up for those who are not like you, for saying that nobody should be discriminated against because of their gender, their race, how much money they have, or who they love. I particularly look forward to uh, working with the Rwanda National Human Rights Commission over the next two years. Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting the, the chair and members of the, the commission recently. Uh, I also look forward to working with the Honorable Minister of, of Justice, uh, who I have had great conversations with around these issues in my time here in, in Rwanda. And we work very closely with the government of Rwanda on promoting many of these issues that you're going to be talking about today. I also look forward to the Rwanda National Human Rights Commission championing the values of democracy, rule of law, and respect for human rights, and holding both the government here and partner governments in the Commonwealth to account on those issues. And then I'd also like to thank the Equalities and Human Rights Commission for their COVID extended tenure as uh, chair of this forum since 2018. I know the hard work and commitment and energy that you've brought to this role, and I commend you for that. I'd also like to recognize the valuable work the EHRC have done in strengthening the work of the forum as a whole and helping build the capacity of national human rights institutions across the Commonwealth. So, uh, Honorable Chair of the Commonwealth uh, Forum of the National Human Rights Institutions and Chair of the Equality and Human Rights Commission of Great Britain, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the Rwandan National Commission of, for Human Rights, Your Excellency, the British High Commissioner of Rwanda, uh, I am a, a Your Excellency, the United Nations Resident uh, Coordinator of Rwanda, uh, Honorable um, Chairpersons and Representatives of the National Human Rights Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am grateful to speak on behalf of the Government of Rwanda and wish you a warm welcome in Kigali, the capital of this beautiful country. It is a pleasure for us to host such an important meeting of the Commonwealth Forum of uh, National Human Rights Institutions, which will uh, open discussion uh, around the topic of human rights for all at the heart and recovery efforts during the, uh, and after the COVID-19. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has been recognized by the United Nations as one of the greatest global challenges in the history of the United Nations. Its considerable negative impact is noticed with concern to the full enjoyment of civil, political, economic, and cultural rights uh, all over the world. Uh, the outbreak of the COVID-19 early in 2020 and the prevention and containment measures in response to the pandemic at times negatively impacted on the civil, political rights, as well as the social, economic, and cultural rights of the populations around the world, especially the vulnerable persons. As Rwanda has passed through this difficult moments just like everyone else. It had to act in solidarity with other countries, especially those in the Commonwealth, to find innovative solutions to the problems caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, such as the addition to the COVAX program and to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on the lives and rights of people. Rwanda adopted early measures to curb uh, the widespread uh, of the COVID-19 with an objective to, to mitigate the impact of the pandemic through the extension of social protections and economic recovery plan to shore up uh, the economy and support business and uh, as well as means of livelihoods uh, severely affected by the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic's uh, negative impact on the, econo on the economy has a direct effect on the realization of human rights uh, sometimes uh, important rights such as the right to life, uh, the right to health, as well as the right to work, uh, uh, the right to education, as well as the freedom of movement and residence, which were curtailed in a way. It is against this framework that the government of Rwanda took immediate actions to ensure recovery to the population in line with the principle of leaving none behind, as enshrined in the SDGs. 
In this regard, and as usual, the government of Rwanda adopted measures that aimed at guaranteeing the enjoyment of human rights to the full extent uh, by populations uh, in these circumstances that we found ourselves in. And uh, some of these measures that were taken include vaccination of the population. Rwanda has vaccinated its population on a, what we could say a, a, a very satisfying rate. Because as of uh, 7th June 2020, uh, from the statistics that uh, we have, 70% uh, uh, of the population, uh, that's 69.58 to be more precise, uh, uh, which translates into 9 million uh, and 82,000 people uh, have been vaccinated for the first dose. 65.65 uh, have been vaccinated for the second dose, which translates into uh, uh, almost 9 million. That's uh, 8.6 uh, for, for the second dose. And then uh, slightly below 40% uh, have received a booster dose. Some of the other measures that have been taken by Rwanda is the use of technology in Rwanda, uh, which contributed very much to the mitigation of the impact of COVID-19 containment measures. Specifically, we noticed some, some very good learned uh, uh, lessons during the COVID-19 pandemic to be adopted even for the future. For example, in the justice sector, we can mention the pleadings in court by using uh, technology such as Skype, uh, which took place during this period, but we hope to uh, use it in order to deal with uh, any other challenges that the courts may, may face in future. And, uh, and to ensure that uh, justice rendered does not delay. Another example is the use of technology in business and also the easy communication to the population about important information such as the COVID-19 pandemic and any other matters in future. Uh, the Economic Recovery Fund to support the recovery of businesses hardest hit by COVID-19 so that they can survive, resume operations and safeguard employment also significantly mitigated the economic effects of the pandemic. There is a demonstrated political will to not only mitigate and the negative impacts of COVID-19 on human rights in Rwanda, but to also learn from the best practices acquired to advance further the human rights in Rwanda uh, and uh, the realization of human rights even in the face of any adversity that we may face in future. This is in line with the government's commitment to build a state governed by the rule of law based on the respect of human rights as provided for in our constitution and as embedded in our, uh, in our national uh, character. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to host the biannual uh, uh, meeting of the Commonwealth Forum of National Human Rights Institutions in Rwanda, and we are happy for the establishment of its secretariat, and which we have expectations that it will really contribute to the collaboration between the members of the forum in effectively promoting protecting as well as ensuring that uh, uh, there's uh, protection of uh, human rights all around the world, especially in the Commonwealth countries. We are commit committed to implement a declaration that will be adopted in this meeting and to work in synergy with the National Commission of, for Human Rights and other actors to bring adequate redress for human rights issues due to the COVID-19 pandemic or any other the challenges that we may face in the Commonwealth. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we really appreciate the role of the National Commission for Human Rights of Rwanda in the justice sector for its conducive manner of playing its advisory role for the respect of human rights by concerned institutions, especially for the treaty body reporting and the universal periodic review process. As we declare the biannual meeting of C, uh, uh, CFN HRI is open, we thank you and wish you uh, deliberations, uh, fruitful deliberations. For those of you who can spare a day or two, I invite you to visit other parts of Rwanda. There are some parts in Rwanda that if you visit, I can assure you that we'll reconcile, you will reconcile with any part of you that you're in conflict with. Thank you very much and I wish you a fruitful meeting.